traditional territory of the Seke Dene, and here in the Injunika River watershed, the two species that are of highest conservation concern are the Arctic grayling and the bull trout. The amount of life and beauty in this valley is breathtaking. Below the water is just as amazing and full of life. We are losing our pristine wilderness at an alarming rate in BC. And this is one of the last strongholds at the southern extent of the Arctic Grayling Range. Since 2018, Chucho Environmental, with the financial support of the Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program, has monitored Arctic Grayling in the Injunika River using snorkeling surveys. My name is John Hagen. I'm a fish biologist, and I've been working with Chucho Environmental in the Sacred Dene Nation for six years now. My name is Mike Stanford, and I've been studying Arctic grayling for the past 20 years or so. I'm particularly interested in improving our understanding of the genetic relationships among the different life history types. I'm Cody Haggard. This is my first year snorkeling with John and Mike on this grayling and bull trout project in Seike Dene territory. It's a real honor to be a part of this team and to be able to see and experience this area the first objective of our snorkeling project is to learn about the conservation status or health of the Injunika River Arctic grayling population. We're using the method of, of downstream snorkeling surveys. We're wearing dry suits. There are three of us in the water and a, a fourth crew member follows the line of divers in a, an inflatable boat providing a rescue if needed. We strategically select index sections to snorkel, and these cover approximately 40% of the Injunika River. The snorkelers space themselves evenly across the channel in lanes. The, and the width of these lanes is determined by underwater visibility. As we snorkel, we enumerate the adult grayling as well as the other species that we encounter. And it requires some real focus they stay organized in these lanes if we get too separated we can either undercount fish or not be able to communicate about fish that are in between us and uh, potentially overcount fish we record the counts on waterproof data sheets that we have strapped to our wrists the second objective is to learn about critical habitats for arctic grayling in the summer by critical habitats, I mean those that potentially limit the population, limit how many grayling there are, how well they survive, and how fast they grow, how big they get. In conserving sensitive wildlife and fish species, it's mostly about conserving the critical habitats they depend on. We also angle for Arctic grayling so that we can measure certain aspects of their physiology, such as their length and their weight. We take scales and fin-ready samples to estimate their ages, and we preserve tissues for genetic analysis. We also put tags in them, which are small orange markers. We count the number of tags that we see so that we can improve the accuracy of our snorkel survey. We do all this fish processing very quickly so that we can release the fish unharmed back into the river. Injunika River Arctic grayling are of conservation concern. When populations have very few adults in them, they're vulnerable to fluctuations in population size and also to loss of genetic diversity. The population may now be isolated in the Injunika River by flooding from Williston Reservoir. The Arctic grayling in particular are of concern because right now the Injunika only seems to support a very small population which makes it vulnerable. The Arctic grayling is a priority species for the compensation program. Snorkeling data from the Injunika River have been identified as a high priority information need. Monitoring the health of this population is what this snorkeling study is all about.